Welcome back to my garage. I'm starting to question my uh, sanity while designing this cylinder because uh, there's a couple of things here that are just weird. So Fritz Overmar sent me an email a few days ago after watching my previous video and uh, he talked about how some of my angles here are uh, really weird. Especially the trailing B angles. They're far too steep. Should have been more like this. We've eliminated this error with the insert. This is my home cast spare cylinder. The actual cylinder in use, the 3D printed one, is uh, sitting on the bike. The inserts are in that cylinder, but they're like, they're like this. They're like blocking everything behind the ruler. That angle is completely wrong. And these angles are actually not as steep as they should be. And this is weird because I think I remember basing my design on Fritz Overmars's scavenging concepts. But maybe it, it could be I based it on the Aprilia RSA. That makes more sense now with uh, all these weird angles. And that also makes sense with uh, the steep trailing B wall angle. Because I think it could be, I th actually think I, uh, I based that angle on the exit angle of the hook in the Aprilia RSA B ports and then I made them a little bit shallower actually but uh, obviously a slight hook with this angle is quite different to the whole port being at this angle. And then there's that exhaust duct which should have an exit area of 100% of uh, blowdown area and uh, it didn't, it had 80. And that also wasn't intentional, but uh, I think maybe the problem was this was my first CAD project. I learned CAD with this cylinder. I didn't even start with a rectangular box or anything. I just went straight to designing this cylinder and uh, I had three weeks of uh, feeling like my brain was about to explode there. And it might be that it was too preoccupied with uh, CAD learning to uh, to pay attention to some really important details, which was supposed to be in here, but uh, but got forgotten in the haze of uh, CAD, CADing. Niels van Nick, the creator of Engmod, also sent me an email giving me some advice. He was talking about how the typical little hook in the B ports is not a statical thing. It's actually creating kind of a fan in the beginning when the ports opens to a scavenge an area, like uh, scavenge a trouble area just uh, in front of the C port. And it's really difficult to get right. Talked about some testing he had done years ago, trying to straighten out the, the wall here, like I've done. And uh, he could never get it to work any better than with a, like a, hooked, a hooked wall. So maybe that's better than running it like this. And then Wayne Wright left a sharp comment telling me how stupid it is to try to run reeds with a, such a large crankcase volume when it is proven that you can't go any lower than like 1.3 to 1 compression ratio, primary compression, without having to run extremely thin reeds which will flutter at high RPM. And that it's proven that like 1.25 to 1 is uh, best for rotary valve. And I know this, because uh, I've listened when he's been talking about this stuff earlier. And uh, the problem is, the problem is I designed the whole thing to run a resonance intake. And in simulations, it seemed to be a good volume for the resonant intake. But we're not running the resonance intake now, are we? We're running reeds. And we're not supposed to run reeds. I never meant to run reeds. I hate reeds. Reeds are a restriction. Just imagine the difference between an open, nice open tube and then a tube with these stiff flaps in it. Restriction to hell with reeds. We're converting the case to rotary valve and we're decreasing crankcase volume down to 1.25 to 1. Without all the stuffing it's about 1.12 to 1. Now with all the stuffing in there it's uh, down to 1.24 or something to 1. Without the reed intake, just the rotary intake from the side, it's much easier to get the right numbers, like 1.25 to 1, without filling in the transfers and stuff. So that's what we're gonna do. A huge thanks to Matthew Sharp for sending me these uh, thermocouple probes. EGT sensors and uh, head temperature sensors, water jacket sensors and stuff. Thank you. This will come in real handy because uh, I've been running a broken EGT sensor in my exhaust for a long while now. I know for a fact we won't get this ready and into the testing stage in this video. I spent all Monday driving to pick up this piece of uh, aluminium I'm going to use for the rotary valves. And I spent all of yesterday designing the, the changes. I was contemplating reusing one of my rotary valves from the brute force concept, but there's uh, involved too many compromises. I decided to start with a clean slate.
in better days. <laughs> We're going to remove some material here to make it easier to insert a 3D printed stuffer to fill in the, the reed intake. Not burning any bridges will still be possible to convert this to resonance intake when we want to. We're also going to do some machining here to accommodate the rotary valve. First we'll make that rotary valve because the mill is already set up with a vise and uh, this will have to be clamped down without the vise but uh, the rotary valve will be made in the vise. I forgot the 130 millimeter max capacity. I thought it was 150. I had to figure out something clever. Success! I don't think it was tightened down properly. I think, because uh, this doesn't really fit the uh, slots. I think it was riding on this surface and not this. At least I hope so. It should be enough to keep it uh, secure. Let's give it another go. You might think that sounded a little weird and that's because I chipped off one of the tips of the flutes immediately when uh, the part came loose. Hooray! Brand new end mill! hard to see but there's a big step here my mill started losing steps in the y direction it's my fault because I was pushing this uh, 16 millimeter end mill too hard I usually run smaller end mills 10 millimeter so this is scrapped now we'll have to start over at least we know we can't push the 16 millimeter end mill that hard slower actually I don't think the speed or feed rate was the problem I think this was the problem too much chips in the in this accordion thing here it was losing steps when traveling closest to this I think it uh, there was too much resistance from uh, the chips piling up here I'm gonna give it another go with the same feeds and speeds but pause once in a while and uh, clear the chips from uh, back here The surface 
surface finish from uh, this face mill is uh, just spectacular. It's hard making riveting content of CNC milling because there's so much flood coolant, you can't really see anything. But that's one side done, now the other side. That's the reason for this feature, because uh, I need a way to hold it this way now. So that's the rotary valve housing done. It's probably the nicest uh, rotary valve housing I've ever made. I had envisioned making all the parts ready in this video and then uh, assembling and testing in the next one. Due to all the mill trouble and having to make a new vise and uh, broken tools and all that stuff. And there's been some personal stuff going on making things harder too. So this is what we've ended up with in this video. Unfortunately, not a bad start though. Next up is machining this case half to fit this to the side. Then machine the insides and 3D print a stuffer here to block the, the current intake. Make the rotary valve and the driver. And we're there. See you next time.